Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So this particular video is about the admission process which has been recently put up by University of Hyderabad. So I'll be talking about uh, the admission notification which University of Hyderabad has just announced for different various courses like MSc, MTech, uh, PhD. So I'll be specifically talking about PhD chemistry in this video. Now three reasons why you should apply as a research scholar in this particular institute. First, that this university comes under the top universities uh, to do PhD. Now you can see according to the QS World University Rankings, English Department, Chemistry Department and Physics Department of University of Hyderabad are among the best in the country to study as per QS World Ranking. All right. So that's the first reason. The second reason is that it comes under Institute of Eminence. Now, Institute of Eminence, there are certain institutes in India which has been considered as Institute of Eminence where government gives some extra effort or they, they, they recognize those institutes as some best, best institute of the country. Now, if an institute is Institute of Eminence, it comes under Institute of Eminence. In that case, you have chances to apply for PMRF fellowship. That is, uh, that is a huge amount of 70,000 per month. I'll be talking about that in the later part of this video. And third reason why you should apply for this is because they are not asking for JRF qualified or GATE qualified. Okay, So they do not ask you to qualify any of the exams. So in case if you were not able to qualify CSIR net JRF or you were not able to qualify GATE exam and you want to join PhD then this is a good option for you. So these are three very important reasons and very solid reasons why you should apply for this particular university. I will be talking about everything in detail about the admission process and all the things which I have discussed in detail we will talk about them. Before going into the video if you guys have not subscribed the channel please do consider subscribing it. If you like the video please give it a like and now without wasting any time let's continue with our video. Alright guys, so you can reach out to this particular page. This is admission portal of University of Hyderabad. I'll give you the link of this in the description of this video. You can directly go to this particular page from there. Now, once you click over here on the admission notification 2021, you will be taken to this particular page. Now, this is the admission notification page. Now, over here, you can see that different points are there like eligibility, how to apply, application fees, everything is there. Let's talk about them. Eligibility, in order to go for eligibility, what are the eligibility criteria? That you have to go in the prospectus to check. Okay, I have just downloaded it already. So, I'll just show you that what are the eligibility. So, for PhD chemistry, I'm telling you, there are total 16 posts or 16 uh, vacancies this year, like this time. And the, the eligibility which they are asking is at least of 55% marks in MSc or equivalent degree in chemistry. All right. Or in elite subjects. So, Either you are MSc in chemistry with 55% marks or you are like uh, you have qualified in any of the elite subjects. Now what are elite subjects? Now B.Tech in chemical engineering, B. Pharma, MSc in physics or in life science are considered as elite subjects. So in case if you have done any of these like MSc in any of these subjects or if you have done B.Tech in uh, chemical engineering then also you are eligible to apply as a PhD scholar for a school of chemistry for chemistry in University of Hyderabad. All right. So this is this goes about your eligibility criteria. Now, uh, like how to apply? So you have to apply through online mode. Online mode of payment and online mode of form filling is there. The date of form filling starts from 21st of June and it goes till last date of 20th of July. So this is the date in between. You have to fill uh, like this particular form. All right. So this is the time which they have given. Uh, while form filling, you will be asked to upload your photograph, you will be asked to upload your signature, your caste certificate. So if you have all these things, just keep handy with you and then you will be able to upload it. Application fees, the fees which they are asking is for unreserved category, it's 600 rupees. Uh, for EWS category, it's 550 rupees. For OBC category, it's 400 rupees. For SCST and PH category, it's 275 rupees and that's what is your application fees for this particular form all right now coming over here the, these are all other informations given over here you can just read them out and regarding each and every step regarding each and every query there is a separate link now all these things are over here okay i'm not going to read on each and everything that's just like whenever you will require it you can click on any one of them and you can read them out what you have to do is you have to go for this online application form just click over here 
and you will be taken to this page now here you have to start a new application now click over here and you will be taken to the page uh, where you have to fill out all your basic details all right so i'll just show you that how does it look so that basic page is going to look something like this so here you have to fill all your details your name your Aadhaar number your choice of exam center all these things you have to fill over here in this page now once you submit this page you will be taken to the other page and that particular page uh, will ask you to fill out any of the exam which you have qualified in case of chemistry and in case of phd chemistry you will be asked to fill out whether you have qualified csir jrf or not and in case if you have qualified then you have to fill all the details required over there your roll number your rank and other things which will be asked over there all right and after that once you fill it the next page and one more thing that if you have not qualified any of the exam you just have to leave it as blank and you can just submit over here the next page is where you have to fill your uh, like details about your family so you can fill all your uh, family related details like your parents uh, like name and their occupation and all the other details and your native place and uh, like all the details which they have asked about your native place all right once you submit you will be taken to the next page where you have to fill your academic details uh, your starting from your class 10th class 12th uh, bsc msc and whatever degrees we have qualified till now you have to fill all of them with all the details over here and that's how this page will be filled in the next page they will ask you for the miscellaneous data asking you about your blood group asking you about your marital status and all the other informations whichever are required they will be asking you so you just have to fill them all right and at the end they will just ask you to fill out your permanent address so that they can communicate with you if you they want to send anything to you they will be able to send over there so just fill out that and submit and once you are done you will be done with the application process now then you have to pay the fees so depending upon your category the fees amount will be shown over here and what you have to do is you can just choose any of the payment gateways either SBI ePay or you can pay it using easy pay ICICI bank now it is not necessary that you should have SBI account to pay through SBI ePay or you should you should have ICICI bank account to pay through ICICI easy pay both of these are payment gateways okay understand this you can have any bank account let's say you have a bank account of hdfc bank yet you can pay from any of these payment gateways these are just two different payment gateways to make the payment all right that does not require that you should have same bank account details i think that's that's much clear to you all right so once you are paid once you are done you will be able to download your application form by filling like this page is there right on the first page uh, sorry on the first page here itself you can just fill your application number date of birth and once you continue after filling the form once you get your application number once you fill it you will be able to get uh, to download your application form just keep that application form for future correspondence all right so this is how the form filling will be done i have just told you in de in very short because it's not something very difficult it's very easy steps are very simple and in case if you are struggling with any of the options just you can drop the, in the comment section below i'll try to figure it out that what you have to do over there all right coming back to this now uh, any in case of any further information if you need any further information you can call to any of these numbers now these numbers will be active during the working hours okay so make sure that you are calling during the working hours to ask for the any of the query now here different links are there you'll see uh, old question papers for the entrance exam is also there you can click here and you can download old question papers you can check out what types of questions are asked then uh, payment gateway then list of phd courses having jrf weightage all right so this is something which i just want to explain over here okay so and one more thing that is obc certificate format now obc certificate format if you if you fall under obc non creamy layer you should have your obc certificate in the same format as they have provided okay so just get it done this will be asked during your admission process not now so this is the this is the application format this one okay so you just have to download it and you just have to get it done coming back to this that uh, what is the actual eligibility like if a particular person has let's say not qualified jrf he has not qualified net and he has not qualified gate then what are the chances that he or she will be qualified uh, he or she will be called in the institute or he or she will be getting admission so with all the previous experiences i am telling you that there are very very high chances that if a particular person is not grf he is uh, he has not qualified any of the entrance exams yet if he qualify the entrance exam of uh, hyderabad central university there are chances that he will be 
asked uh, to join the campus after the interview okay so the entrance will be followed by interview and both the marks will be added up and then the particular person is going to be called for the for the admission process all right so this is how it will be going so one more thing about the stipend okay that how much stipend a particular person will get in case if you have qualified jrf then obviously you will be getting 31000 from csir or ugc wherever you have qualified that jrf from but in case if you have not qualified jrf okay and you have not qualified any of the exam neither net neither gate neither jrf in that case you will be getting 8000 rupees let's say you have qualified net you have not qualified jrf you have not qualified gate then also 8000 rupees all right let's say you have qualified gate plus net but you have not qualified jrf in that case also you will be getting 8000 rupees so only a particular person who has qualified jrf is going to get 31000 as a stipend so basically a particular person who has qualified gate will not be considered for fellowship gate fellowship or institute fellowship which gate provides which you get through gate that is 31000 that you only get in IITs, ISERs, NITs, NISERs and all those institutes which AICTE takes care of. UGC takes care of universities. So here you will not get any 31,000 rupees through GATE. Okay. You will go get only that uh, fellowship, 31,000 rupees fellowship through JRF, not through GATE. But yet, university provides a minimum amount of fellowship that is 8,000 rupees. So 8,000 per month you are going to get. Now the question is, is 8000 sufficient in the campus in the University of Hyderabad? So yes, uh, because the things are subsidized over here, uh, things are not that much costly inside the campus. So 8000 rupees, you can bear up your expenses if you are if you are a kind of person who do, who do not spend much. All right. So the next thing is that will this fellowship be changed afterwards if you qualify exam? Yes, obviously. Let's say you qualify the exam in the second year or in first year or in any year during your PhD, you qualify CSI or JRF. In that case, your fellowship will be elevated to 31,000 and that will be converted in that way. All right. So don't worry about it. If in any case during your uh, PhD, you qualify for JRF, then in that case, your fellowship will be escalated. All right. And again, I'm making this very clear that no like fellowship will be given through gate here. All right. The next thing is about PMRF, which I was talking about in the initial part of this video. So PMRF is a fellowship which is provided in order to enhance or in order to encourage people to join research. Okay, this is provided only in IITs, ISERs, and also in Institute of Eminences. Okay, so if beside IITs, ISERs, let's say you were, you didn't got admission over there, but you want you got admission in let's say University of Hyderabad, which is one of the Institute of Eminence. You can see over here it shows that it is institute of eminence right so if it is if you joined over here as a phd then every year certain number of seats or certain number of vacancies comes for every institute as a, uh, for pmrf fellowship so you have to perform good in your coursework you have to uh, perform good in, in in the initial part of your research and once you are good with all those things uh, your supervisor will escalate your name for pmrf fellowship you will compete with the other students who whose name will be there and based upon that, the university selection committee is going to bring up certain names who will be asked or who will be selected as the PMRF candidates. And once you will be selected for PMRF candidate, you will be getting a stipend of rupees 70,000 per month. 70,000 per month as a PMRF candidate. All right. I'm emphasizing so much to join because it's a very good opportunity for those students who have uh, who have not been able to qualify any of the entrance exams because of any various other reasons but they are very willing to join research they are very much focused towards research and they want to join somewhere as a phd scholar for them this is a very good opportunity all right so you can fill the form uh, like you can give the entrance exam and you can take the benefit of that if you have any other doubt regarding form filling regarding any other issues uh, with it you can drop down in the comment sections below I'll try to answer it over there itself. All right. So that's it for this video. I hope the things are much clear to you. If in case you have any other doubt, you can read out. There are all the things mentioned over here. Okay. You will not feel any problem with it. All the things are mentioned over here and you can easily know about anything which you need to know. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope to see you guys in my next video. Till then, have a great day. Bye-bye.